Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Das Science, and today we're going to talk about the wave function of coherent states in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. If you've been following our series on coherent states, then you know, number one, that coherent states are defined as the eigenstates of the Loring operator, and number two, that coherent states are called quasi-classical states because they are the quantum states that most closely resemble the motion of a classical harmonic oscillator. What we want to do today is to discuss the properties of the wave function of coherent states. We will learn that the coherent state wave function is essentially a displacement of the ground state wave function. So you won't be surprised to hear that it has a Gaussian shape. We will also learn how coherent states are minimum uncertainty states. And we will also see how the wave function of coherent states actually undergoes the back and forth motion that we typically associate to classical harmonic oscillators. We'll get started by directly writing down the coherent state wave function without explicitly going through its mathematical derivation. But we do have a video where we go step by step through that mathematical derivation. It's linked in the description, so don't forget to check it out. So let's go! Let's start with a quick refresher of the quantum harmonic oscillator. The Hamiltonian H is equal to the kinetic energy plus the quadratic potential energy. We can also write this down in terms of the raising and lowering operators or in terms of the number operator. This is the eigenvalue equation of the Hamiltonian, where En are the eigenvalues and the kets N are the eigenstates. The eigenvalues En are quantized and are equal to h bar omega times n plus one half, where n is a non negative integer. We can navigate the associated eigenstates using the ladder operators. So if we consider the real axis and place an energy eigenvalue here with the associated energy eigenstate, acting on eigenstate n with the lowering operator, gives a new eigenstate n minus 1, where the energy has decreased by a quantum of energy. Similarly, acting on eigenstate n with the raising operator gives a new eigenstate n plus 1, where the energy has increased by a quantum of energy. So this is it for the quick refresher, and you can find many more details in our series on the quantum harmonic oscillator that is linked in the description. Let's next take a look at coherent states of the quantum harmonic oscillator. A coherent state alpha is defined as the eigenstate of the Loring operator with eigenvalue alpha. As usual, these here are the eigenvalues, and these here are the eigenstates. As the Loring operator is not Hermitian, the eigenvalues are in general complex numbers. We can actually write coherent states in a variety of alternative but equivalent forms. So let's start writing it in the energy basis. A coherent state alpha is equal to this prefactor times an infinite sum over the weighted energy eigenstates. An alternative form involves the use of the displacement operator. The displacement operator d alpha is defined as the exponential function of this sum over ladder operators. We can then write the coherent state alpha as equal to the action of the displacement operator on the ground state of the quantum harmonic oscillator. Again, you can find many more details about all of these concepts by following the relevant links in the description. So what we will do today is to consider the expression of the coherent state alpha in the position representation. Or to put it another way, we'll study the wave function of coherent states. Let's go straight to the coherent state wave function. For a coherent state alpha, we write the wave function as psi alpha of x, and it is equal to the bracket between the position eigenstate x and the coherent state alpha. In the companion video to this one, we go through the mathematical calculation of this wave function. And the answer that we find there is that the wave function of a coherent state alpha is given by the product of this exponential multiplying this other exponential multiplying the displaced ground state wave function of the quantum harmonic oscillator. Let's start with the phase theta alpha here. 
if we copy it down, it is equal to minus the real part of alpha times the imaginary part of alpha. This term here is the expectation value of the momentum operator in state alpha and is equal to this prefactor times alpha minus alpha star. This term here is the expectation value of the position operator in state alpha and is equal to this other prefactor times alpha plus alpha star. And from the video on quantum harmonic oscillator eigenfunctions, we also know that this wave function here is the ground state wave function of the quantum harmonic oscillator, which is equal to this prefactor times this Gaussian exponential. Again, for the mathematical derivation of this result, make sure you check out the companion video. And what we will do today is to explore the properties of this wave function, which will teach us a number of really important features of coherent states. First, let's calculate the absolute value squared of the wave function, which gives the probability distribution of the particle position. It is simply equal to the absolute value squared of the displaced ground state. And this is true because this term and this term have magnitude 1. If we recall again the form of the ground state wave function, which is equal to this prefactor times this exponential, then we can spell out the absolute value squared of the coherent state wave function as equal to this prefactor times this exponential. We now need to remember a result from the video on quasi-classical states linked in the description. The root mean square deviation of the position operator in a coherent state is equal to this constant factor. Rearranging, we get that m omega over h bar is equal to 1 over 2 times the root mean square deviation of x all squared. Inserting this expression into this term in the exponential, and into this term in the prefactor, we conclude that we can rewrite the absolute value squared of the coherent state wave function as equal to this prefactor times this exponential. And now we can clearly see the form of the coherent state wave function. It is a Gaussian. It is a Gaussian centered at the expectation value of the position operator here and whose width is equal to the root mean square deviation of the position operator here. This result makes sense. The coherent state wave function is essentially the displaced ground state of the quantum harmonic oscillator, and the ground state is itself a Gaussian. So what can we learn from the fact that we got a Gaussian for the wave function of a coherent state? In the video on quasi-classical states, we find that the root mean square deviation of the position operator in a coherent state is equal to this constant factor. And we also learn that the root mean square deviation of the momentum operator is equal to this other constant factor. Multiplying delta x with delta p, we get this constant factor times this other constant factor. The masses cancel here and here, and the frequencies also cancel here and here. And overall, we get h bar over 2. Now, remembering that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle says that for any state, delta x multiplied by delta p is larger than or equal to h bar over 2, then we see that for coherent states, we have a situation where this here becomes an equal sign. And this means that coherent states are minimum uncertainty states. And we know from the video on minimum uncertainty states that they always take a Gaussian form. So all in all, this result is consistent with our earlier discussion about the Gaussian form of coherent state wave functions. Coherent states are minimum uncertainty states, so the wave functions had to be of Gaussian form. For the next property I want to discuss, we need to remember that a coherent state alpha can be written as the action of the displacement operator d alpha on the ground state. So let's draw the real axis, where we will plot the coordinate x, and we also place the origin. Let's first consider the ground state of the quantum harmonic oscillator here. 
we can draw the absolute value squared of the ground state wave function as a Gaussian centered at the origin. Next, let's consider the coherent state alpha here. In this case, we can draw the absolute value squared of the coherent state as another Gaussian. But now its center has been displaced to this new position. This provides a new perspective on our understanding of coherent states and displacement operators. A coherent state is simply a displacement of the Gaussian ground state wave function from the origin to this position here. And this displacement is provided by the action of the displacement operator acting on the ground state. Or to put it another way, the displacement operator displaces the ground state wave function to generate a coherent state. Let's next consider the time evolution of the coherent state wave function. From the video on coherent states, we know that if the initial state of our system is a coherent state alpha zero, then the state of the system at a later time t is equal to a global phase factor times another coherent state alpha, where alpha is equal to alpha zero times this phase. Or to put it another way, a coherent state stays coherent at all times. Now, what does this look like in terms of wave functions? We could write out the full wave function up here at an arbitrary time point by simply using the corresponding coherent state eigenvalue alpha at each time. However, what we will do instead is to directly consider the time dependence of the absolute value squared of the wave function, because that will be a more enlightening calculation for our purposes. It is also pretty straightforward to evaluate as it is simply the absolute value squared of the displaced ground state wave function. But now the displacement is time dependent because the coherent state evolves according to this expression up here. We can also use this explicit expression for the absolute value squared to rewrite it as this prefactor times this Gaussian exponential. In this latest expression, the coherent state features in two places. The first is the expectation value of the position operator here, and we actually calculated the time dependence of this expectation value in the video on quasi-classical states. And the answer is that we get this prefactor times this cosine term where the phase phi depends on the initial conditions. The second place where the coherent state features is in the root mean square deviation of the position here and here. And we also found on the video on quasi-classical states that the root mean square deviation in state alpha is actually a time independent constant. So what does this mean? The coherent state wave function is a Gaussian whose center oscillates back and forth according to this equation, and the oscillation occurs at frequency omega. On top of that, the Gaussian does not spread over time because its width, given the root mean square deviation of the position here, is constant. So what does the evolution in time actually look like? The expression is not very intuitive, so let's add some action and look at an animation. This wave packet in red is a coherent state whose initial position is at one extreme of the oscillatory motion here. If we then start our time evolution, we can clearly see the back and forth motion that we expect for a harmonic oscillator with the center of the wave packet following this equation here. This motion makes it very clear that coherent states move like classical particles in a harmonic oscillator. And we can also see, as we just discussed, that the wave packet does not spread in time because the root mean square deviation here is constant. And these are all characteristic features of coherent states. I always like seeing the coherent state wave function going back and forth. It allows us to see really clearly the connection between our everyday macroscopic world and the microscopic quantum world. Also, don't forget to check out the mathematical derivation of the form of the coherent state wave function in the companion video. And as always, if you liked this video, please subscribe.